Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Skoldi and today I'm going to demonstrate a quick and easy way to handle animation states. Let's begin by creating our main scene. I'm just gonna select a control node and then rename it main. Then I'm going to press control S to save and hit the save button. Now our goal with the animation state is to simply go from one animation to the next in a clean way without having to do a lot of um, work. For this we'll need a sprite so we can actually look at something that we animate. So having the sprite selected, let's go to the texture here, select the null, load, and select the little icon right here. Let's drag it to the middle somewhere so we can see it. Let's rename this to sprite or lower snake case. And let's add the animation player. With the animation player, we're gonna create three animations. And we want to go from one animation to the next and to the next. So you can obviously, when you, once you get the hang of this, create as many animation states as you want and go from one to the other and control the order of the animation as they play. So if you wanted to make a cutscene, this technique would probably be a... Uh, a good option. Let's make the sprite do something. Let's select a little paper on the bottom here. Let's make it uh, rotate left. Actually, let's make it number in front of it so I know the order here. So the first thing, we want to rotate left. Now the second one is rotate towards the right. And lastly, we want to jump up and down. Victory pose or something like that. And hit OK. So let's now select the first one and let's make it rotate towards the left. In order to do that, we have to select the sprite after having the animation window open here. Let's scroll down to Rolls which is right here, which stands for rotation. Now the default one is zero, so let's hit the key on the first frame, because the red line indicates where the key will appear. So let's hit create, let's drag it all the way to one second, and let's change the rotation a little bit. In fact, let's just press E and then drag it to the side here. Let's make it rotate a little like so. And then let's hit key again to actually create the second one. So now if we now drag this along, we can actually see the animation. But make sure to end it on the one second, because we want to create the next animation from this position, or rather rotation. So let's select 2 now, and the red bar is at 0 again. Let's hit the key once again. Hit create, and let's drag the red bar to 1. And let's rotate it to the right. Let's hit rotation key again. And now we have that part. Let's go to the last one, which is just jump up and down. So on the first key, let's make sure to set the position where we are right now. Let's go to half... Actually, let's go about there. Let's move it up. Press W on your keyboard to change to move mode from rotation mode. Move up, hit position, then drag it to the right a little bit. Let's go down, hit position. Let's drag it to the right a little bit, and let's go up again, and hit the position. So what's gonna happen now, we are gonna play from 1 to 2 to 3, and then you're just gonna stop. You can optionally make this loop if you want, and if that is the case, you should remove the last key and just hit this button. And the reason you want to remove the last key is because once it reaches this point, it's gonna return to the first node, or rather the first key in our animation. So that's just something to keep in mind. So let's make sure to select the first state again, so this little sprite re resets to what it should be. So let's begin by creating our script. So right click our main scene attach a script and let's keep the default suggested name. Let's remove all the comments and let's begin by creating a enumerator for our animation states. That's done by writing enum and then anim state. Now this is just a variable name. You can name this whatever you want. So inside that we want three states and the first one is rotate left. The second one is rotate right. The third one is jump up down and you can actually add your own as many as you want really. Now, the order in here does not matter. It's up to you to make them run in order. First thing we need to do, we need to actually connect to our anim player's signals. And that is done by getting a reference to an animation player, which is simply done by get node, and then the anim player dot connect. The signal we want to connect with is finished. And if you don't remember the signal name, you can select the animation player and take a look under node. And there we have signals, and here we have finished, animation start, animation changed. Let's enter in finished. The target object is ourself, because we want the next method or the function we want to run to run inside our main. So if you wanted the connect this signal to another node, you could do that as well. But we're not gonna do that, we're gonna keep it simpler. So on finished. Actually, let's name it on anim finished. Let's begin by start playing our animation. So our first animation is going to be rotate left. So let's just do that inside ready. That is done by get node anim player dot play. And then the name of the animation and as you can see, we have these suggestions right here. Now, why this is not in uh, order, I have no idea. That's a little odd, actually. Hopefully, we'll fix that in the future. So, let's now create this function. So, func on animation finished, we are gonna do something. Well, we gotta use this, so we need a variable to actually store this in. So, on top of here, let's create var anim state. And by default, let's just set it to null, because we're gonna update this inside here. So, before we play the first animation, we need to set the animation state. And we no, we're gonna rotate left, so let's set it to anim state dot rotate left. The value in here is just a integer. 
But the way we use enums is using it makes it more readable by using enums. You can you can use variable zero, one, two if you want, but it's less readable. So enumerators are a very good option for this. Now we're gonna control what we do when the animation finishes, and because we're gonna play the animation multiple times, we don't really have an easy way of knowing what animation has played, unless of course we're using animation states. On finish, first we want to check what state it is. So if the anim state is equal to well, rotate left. Let's make sure to actually add the anim state in front of it. And in here, we are going to do the next thing. So if we have just finished playing the rotate left, we want to do something in between here. Elif, if our animation state is anim state dot rotate right, well, we want to do something else. And lastly, elif if the anim state is equal to anim state dot jump up and down, well, we want to do something else once again. So let's begin implementing this. So inside here, we are going to update the animation state to the animation state we want to play next, and that is anim state dot rotate right. And then, of course, we have to play the animation. So I'm just going to copy this, go in here, play, and then rotate right. When this is done running, we're going to run this again, and then the animation state is going to be equal to rotate right. Let's copy this, put it in here, but then we want to jump up and down, and then three, jump up and down. On the second animation, finish, animation state is going to play of this one. So this is where you probably do something else. So let's pray it. All animations has completed. And that's uh, all there is to this. So if you now hit play, we're gonna start playing the rotate left, and then when it's done playing, we're gonna immediately rotate towards the right. And when that is done, we're gonna jump up and down. And when that's completed, we are going to print that all animations has completed. So let's hit list button over here. Left, right, up and down. And we're done. So that's just a quick and easy tip of how to handle animation states if you want to do several animations in one go, or simply just to do in-between logic between animations. Instead of getting animation player this way, it would probably be better getting it using a onReady var anim player equals get node anim player. That way you can simply replace all get nodes with the anim player. And this is a much better way of doing it instead of getting the animation in each uh, inside the code there, because we want to access this several times. So that's just something to keep in mind. And if you're done playing all the animations and you don't want to play any more animations, it might be a good idea to set the animation state back to null, like so. So if you allow later were to check this for some reason, well, you would know that no animation player is actually playing because we're done here. So if you want to take a look at this code yourself and didn't follow along, you can find the source code to this project in the description below. If this was helpful to you, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. I want to see more crazy videos in the future. And then I hope to see you in a future video. Bye bye